Hello, I'm Tan, the Tan BOTC channel, and um, I'm doing some research myself and into stuff, which ironically, I, while I love Nostalgia Critic's video on the Sam Raimi Spider-Mans or videos, I do think with some of the stuff he, he's mostly comparing to stuff he's seen and watched, but there are obviously things he didn't do research in. And it, because people like me or other people have watched certain things, uh, they have the knowledge of knowing that Nostalgia Critic not only doesn't know, but is getting a lot of his information and such from the wrong places. <laughs> I still love those reviews, but I remember he compared the... Mary Jane decision with the kid card of kids to uh, Batman, which you could admittedly, I think, I would have to see what time, the, what uh, when Batman Forever released and when that episode released, um, where they do the same thing. But there are three Spider-Man episodes from the 90s Spider-Man cartoon. I actually had to write down the episodes here. Let me get them up. I also took pictures of a lot of the scenes from the freaking episode and wrote down uh, what each scene corresponds to in the series. So it's it's so it's more likely that Sam Raimi was influenced more. It would be more likely influenced by the comic books. He's older at that time. He probably wouldn't be checking out a kids cartoon. He was probably a fan of Spider-Man way before that kids cartoon. And uh, it's more likely he would have read the comics and such. And but, goddamn, is this isn't the closest, almost exact replica to a lot of the things that play out in the in that first Sam Raimi movie. <laughs> it, so this is by one of my first. Well, I actually had a couple others. Uh, Spider-Man month videos and I wanted to talk about this because I thought it very interesting. I'm not of course gonna bash I'm not gonna bash on Nostalgia Critic, I probably already did that anyways, but that is not my purpose. I just thought he was coming from a place of maybe a little bit of misinformation or not having all the knowledge maybe he would need for certain things. I'm gonna have definitely a person here. So let's get what we can and get ready for them. I'm sure we don't want out of ammo too. It's very likely we would. Okay. But um yeah, I, I took a bunch of pictures of all the different scenes. It's very interesting, the stuff that plays out. To the stuff that, um, is one of the guys. Well, those might be bots, because the pattern in which they're shooting at each other. Get it down the stairs. Down here. Okay, I missed a bunch of shots there. Just I got them afterwards. But uh, there's a lot of sequences that are very similar to the goddamn movie. Um, there's probably people who've already covered this stuff, honestly, more than I have. But I thought it interesting because I don't think they really tied it in. At least I don't think so. To uh, nostalgia critic stuff, and once again, not bashing on nostalgia critic. Not, I don't hate his review or anything for what he does. No, what he's talking about, but I do feel like there's a bit of miss missing information there. And yeah, I wanted to talk about it. So the episodes with, sorry, I had to drop my phone just briefly. 
So the first episode is season three, episode four, The Sins of the Father, chapter four, Enter the Green Goblin. And season three, episode 14, The Sins of the Father, chapter 14, Turning Point. And finally, season four, episode eight, Partners in Danger, chapter eight, The Return of the Green Goblin. So there's a bunch of plot points that go on here. So... There's actually a character that we're, he's working on an experiment, which turns him into the goblin. He even has the burning building scene, though it's not the green goblin fighting him. So there's definitely plot deviations. There kind of has to be. It's a kid's cartoon. They're probably not going to legit kill off characters there either. So it at least makes more sense there, but where the, some of the dark tone, especially near the end, the end fight of uh, the Spider-Man movie, uh, it, it just feels a little bit weirder that they didn't take the risks, though it also feels early too. <laughs> but you see a character that uh, this uh, bald character that looks very much, and I think was the idea for the the same bald bald character helping out Willem Dafoe's character, which I think was originally going to be the Vulture, both versions. I can't remember if this guy actually turns into. I know there's a young younger character that turns into the vulture or whatever or maybe they turn young through some experiment and that's what they look like as the vulture i can't quite remember oh storm's coming after me hold on all right whoa that is a drop Did not see that coming oh up with me. Frick you, Storm. Let's get this just in case, too. Alright. So, we're gonna have to, uh, find more heals as well. And if we can find some here. But yeah, that's the first thing. I took a picture of the scene. I'm actually sending them to Dave to see what he thinks. Um, but yeah, it, once I get deeper into this, it's it's freaking ridiculous how similar the, the two are. You could almost watch these three episodes and get the same goddamn experience as the movie. I don't know who does it better, because I feel like they both have their own ways in how they approach that being better but i do think because of the added being a tv show and the added time that it's given and such the tv show might have more weight to it than one singular movie that, been, yeah, that might come in more handy than the freaking other thing yeah the next the next scene there's of course a scene that plays as like a flashback that is the scene that if they actually uh, zoomed out with all the characters around the table, they actually show, like, everybody at the table, this board meeting. And, of course, it's, like, basically the, the same plot of, like, uh, Norman Osborn's company is going down <laughs> or going to go down if these experiments don't work. And uh, they're even finding a replacement uh, though it does change by the end of the plot, it is very similar. Very similar. <laughs> uh, even the scene itself and him kind of freaking out. Maybe not quite as freaking out as Willem Dafoe, but it is very similar to one another. Even, like, the shot of him up close getting freaking angry at them. <laughs> the board the board meeting. Um then uh, there's the scene later so he's capturing all the board so he does he doesn't kill the people that were firing him like in the movie but he does capture them for i guess a scene that he would potentially kill them but because spider-man intervenes he doesn't and it it go there's a scene where uh, Felicia Hardy's mother gets captured, and it's her and her mother that he has to choose between, where he throws both of them out of the sky, and he, it's used actually for 
uh, a plot point that works a lot better there, maybe. Though, once again, they still bring this up later with Mary Jane. A very similar scene. I'll get to that later. There's even scenes where you, where he, of course, is talking to himself. Once again, the comic books also do replicate a lot of this stuff, but not to the point that when you look at some of these scenes, they're almost shot for shot, just an animated version of the movie. <laughs> and I found the perfect picture of just his smiling, creepy face and what nailed Willem Dafoe as the one to get the role. <laughs> His big, creepy-ass smile. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, that's that's why they chose Willem Dafoe right there. <laughs> that freaking creepy-ass smile. And this is, of course, going into the, the other episode where the Green Goblin comes back. And the Green Goblin is spying on uh, Peter Parker. There's a portal device they use in the show. That differs from the... There's also the Kingpin and uh, Punisher play a part within this, the coming story, too. So probably might be cooler to people in a way, because I'm sure people would find just the fact that the Kingpin and Punisher are involved makes it a little more cool credit, cool, or whatever you want to call it, for, like, it scores points for the show just for having such freaking awesome characters and um characters we don't really get to see and of course he's spying on peter parker taking off the spider suit uh and he finds out who he is he's conflicted with himself too in a similar way about his son too they're, they're friends and he uses this to get at the, his love interest later though um not hearing much people other than that one car. There's either even a dinner. Oh, there's either either the. Jeez, sorry, it's I slurred my words. Let's hope this isn't freaking. Okay, good. It's not. Oh, I think this is a player. Okay. Nope, that was not a player. That was too dumb. <laughs> Player would at least. That is a player. <laughs> ah, good job. Three health. God damn. Let's show that person just because, you know what? Ace of Spades. Nice name. Just because I felt like that was a cool battle, where other times it was just some try-hard asshole. <laughs> and of course they pissed me off. <laughs> but that guy was actually cool, so I'll show him name on, his name on stream at least. Um, but uh, then I picture, took a picture of another scene that felt very similar to the turkey dinner scene in Spider-Man 1. And they both now know each other's identity, and Norman is kind of hinting to it at the table and causing some drama. It plays out differently, but like the set piece and everything, it's like almost very similar. <laughs> of course, his aunt isn't there and such, and it's not just between his friends, but still. And of course, that stinking part about him talking bad about Mary Jane. And then finally, while this isn't crazier than the movie, and Nostalgia Critic was like, this is the craziest scene, you would never see this in anything else, the Green Goblin even goes into his freaking aunt's bedroom with his glider, <laughs> and it almost feels like the same scene. It's even a little goofy, too, because like, he's like, shh, don't wanna wink Aunt May. <laughs> He kind of sounds like freaking uh, Skeletor, by the way, the voice actor. <laughs> and it's even got that scene. But of course, he doesn't go for Aunt May. He goes for Mary Jane next. And thus the bridge scene where it takes the place of... Um, is it Gwen Stacy or... Because it's Felicia Hart. Yeah, it's... It basically takes place of the the death of his his love interest in the comics, and um, 
like she doesn't die but she does get tossed off not really by the green goblin but he's definitely responsible for why she falls off and she goes through a portal instead making peter believe because he didn't see her go through the portal making him believe that she fell off and he was too late he even tried to webs like uh shoot his webs out to where he thought she was but yeah uh that's crazy <laughs> the portal thing really is the big difference maker and then finally there's a scene where his portal his kind of portal device goes haywire and it ha it's it almost has that same effect that the sun which they also do have an episode similar to that thing by the way with doc ock the sun device that he makes in spider-man 2 where it's sucking everything in around it and growing bigger and it's kind of the same deal the portal is going through except it's sucking in norman osborne and spider-man goes out to he reaches out for spider-man and he goes to reach out while it's a different scenario uh willem dafoe's green goblin does kind of do a similar thing that trick him where he's like take my hand peter and it's like a similar thing except this is more of a rescue situation though honestly that could be called a rescue situation too and of course the scene that like told me this is definitely where it freaking that he got his influence was he tricks him he pulls out a button a device where he presses the button for his glider to fall fly from behind into peter parker as spider-man of course he dodges and it hits norman instead but he goes through a portal instead of getting impaled on his balls <laughs> his balls impaled uh, <laughs> don't tell peter <laughs> But that one scene right there told me this is where he got it. This is freaking where he got that movie. And I don't know if other people talk about it, but I wanted to talk about it. And then the final couple things in the last episode I mentioned was Harry Osborne sees a reflection image of his father. And he, tell, he basically convinces him to become the goblin next. And he's kind of going crazy, too, and seeing his father everywhere in reflections. Um, and then, of course, he finds out who Peter is. Peter finds out who he is. They even kind of have that, you know how... It's reversed role, though, where Peter... Instead of Peter being wrapped up and delivered to Harry, it's Harry being wrapped up and delivered to Peter. <laughs> so, it's... It's kind of fun, funny where a lot of this stuff came from. And uh, though in the show, Mary Jane does come back. And they also kind of replicate the uh, marriage between him and Mary Jane. There's a lot of important parts in the comic books they actually are able to cover a lot better in that TV show. That TV show is probably the biggest redemption for the comic books and doing a lot of those big plot points though it doesn't actually kill off mary jane and such it definitely has the stronger plot the stronger plot points the probably better developed characters and chemistry between them you have more there when watching the entirety of that show and it it's not really fair to the movie, but it definitely delivers better than the movie. <laughs> if you include all that stuff. If you're just including the three episodes, I can see people preferring the movie. But if you're including the entire series, you can't deny that it's able to frickin' have more of uh, that character development and those iconic moments from the comics and such. And those characters and all that. Um... It's def. It's got to be where Sam Raimi got his ideas. Like, there, there's no question after what I saw. <laughs> I used to watch. I haven't watched this show in a while too. And I was doing it for Spider-Man Month, and I was like, "Holy crap! Has anybody talked about this? I bet they have, but they never used the Nostalgia Critic because the Nostalgia Critic used Batman Forever for that one scene. But it might have even been this that did it technically first. And even if it wasn't, uh." 
it still would seem more like he took the idea from, was more likely taking it from that if all the other ideas and things that happen are already taken from that. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It was crazy to me, like, uh, all the similarities they had between the two. Let's see what they got in the store while I'm talking to you still. Oh, wow, what is... What is this? That's a dope ass version of that skin. That's pretty cool. Oh, look at the Lyco version. That's kind of cool too. If it'll show. There we go. Look at that. Oh wow, I can actually get it too. But I, I kind of want to wait. <laughs> it's Bane. <laughs> it's their equivalent of Bane. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. Um, but yeah, uh, like there's no way they that Sam Raimi didn't get a lot of the ideas from this. Like that's it just blows my freaking mind after watching these episodes. <laughs> I was like, whoa, what the frick? That's totally where he got those ideas. How else? Where else would he have gotten them? But yeah. Um, I thought that was really interesting. I also noticed something when I was watching the shows. I have a figure of Eclipso, and I was like, he's he's like he's like right in front of me right now. I have him set up, and I looked over at him and I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> you look like a you know reused mold of the Green Goblin. And I thought there is similar design between him and the Green Goblin too. Design-wise, at least. Not entirely, but there are some similarities. Like, with the hat and all that crap. Uh, the pointy ears, the freaking... Even the smile on his face they used for that toy. Though he's definitely nothing like the Green Goblin. I can see similarities there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I think that's the only difference between mine and wh whoever else did a similar video is just like the utilization of nostalgia critics video that he was lacking a lot of context from where it probably actually came from now i probably should have done more research into where sam raimi would have gotten it but like i feel like this almost nails that down and i don't need to and it feels better to kind of connect the pieces yourself kind of like with dark souls you connecting the story pieces than to go looking for it and getting a straightforward answer uh, that may or may not be as entirely straightforward as you think. But yeah, um, still really interesting um, situation, and I'm still mad at my friend for beating Sam Raimi instead of bringing me along. <laughs> my friend got to meet Sam Raimi, and that was pretty dope. Um, wish I was freaking there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like holy crap i'm very very surprised from from that when watching it i even see plot points in spider-man 3 and 2 somewhat from this show it's freaking crazy um though of course 3 got bumbled up a bit <laughs> they even have the like even though peter does have a similar mood there's actually is a video talking about what changed venom in the story of the symbiote suit forever and they pointed to the show and there's a lot of similarities especially in how peter's kind of emo mood comes from it's not as goofy as sam raimi's with the whole de dance sequence and all that but you can see the beats there and you can tell he also might have gotten a lot of that stuff from there so yeah <laughs> it's it's pretty cool if i i have a feeling that sam raimi was more likely looking at the show when it came to eddie brock because i can see why eddie brock wouldn't impress him as much because eddie brock in the show really isn't nearly as deep as he is in the comic books um though i'm still mad that sam raimi's imagery couldn't be brought to life there because there is cool ass imagery even in that show where it shows the big floppy spider-man suit reach grabbing peter at the same time as a big blobby monster of uh, venom 
before he becomes Venom is gr tugging at him on the other side. And then finally he gets the grasp of him and eats him. He wakes up with the black suit on him. Almost very similar to Spider-Man 3, how he gets it on him. So, yeah, there's a lot of similarities I didn't think of between the sh that show and there. There's definitely a big influence for that goddamn trilogy. And I'm just kind of... My mind's a little bit blown. And I'm going to see what uh, Dave thinks. He's going to be playing Fortnite. I might even stream it. So... Let me know what you think. What do you think he got influenced by? It's freaking crazy. Just watch those three episodes. Come back to me. They're on Disney Plus or if you own them or whatever. Uh, if you don't want to give money to Disney. <laughs> I don't. I technically is, aren't because I'm sharing with Dave. <laughs> so. <laughs> but um, that's how I was able to watch them. And it just, once again, blew my mind. Like connecting those pieces and sending those parts Dave so yeah I hope to see you next time you, I hope you enjoyed this video I know I kind of sat here on the main menu for this last part but nonetheless I hope you found the commentary at least interesting and I will see you next time have a awesome day bye bye or night depending on where you are in the world <laughs>